Hi, everybody. Uh, today is February the 13th, 2021. This is Wes Fryer at Cassidy School, and I'm going to do a little screencast to show something I did last year that was hugely helpful to me. And depending upon how your student information system is set up, um, or, or whatever information system that has a calendar that you want to import, uh, this could be helpful for you too. So here at our school we have a um, system called Blackboard that has all of our classes and I can have a calendar uh, that I can subscribe to that shows me all of my classes but the problem is I need it to be part of my personal calendar because I use a tool name called Calendly that lets people schedule things with me um, and I actually haven't, well, I might be able to figure out how to get that one to also be checked by Calendly, but what I can't do on, on Google Home, <laughs> because I like to say, hey, G, uh, what's, a, what's my schedule today? And it'll tell me everything that I have to do. Um, it won't work with two calendars. It only works with one. So I guess maybe a big reason I'm doing this is because I'm using Google Home um, and I want to keep using it. So anyway, here we go. Um, so... Uh, this is showing the subscribed calendar. Okay, this isn't my um, my personal calendar that's tied to my Gmail account. This is a calendar that I've subscribed to, and it, and it shows all of my classes. So I'll show you how to get that first, and then what I'm going to do with that. So when we log in here to our website uh, for Blackboard, um, and we go to our schedule and performance. Um, this is where we can see our calendar, and you can see this nice month view, and it shows me, you know how all we're starting school next Wednesday, and, and there's the, there are the classes. Up here in the upper right corner, there's this icon that looks like a feed icon, and when I click that, it has something called a WebCal URL. That is what I'm going to use, and I'm going to go ahead and copy that. Now, if I just wanted to have this as one of many calendars that I can view here on my computer, um, in Google Calendar, I'll scroll down to other calendars and click the plus, and then I'm going to say from URL, and I can paste in this address, add calendar, and it's going to add that calendar um, to my uh, list. And I can come over here and um, just move myself over a little bit. It's it's going to it's going to it's going to be added um, as a calendar. Now I've already subscribed to that one, so I don't think it's a, that may be why it's not showing up again. Um, but this is it. It's this subscribe calendar. But again, I want to take all of those events and I want to copy them as quickly as I can all at once over to my other calendar. Now, if you know a better way of doing this, let me know. What I discovered last year was when I click on this. Um, I can't edit these events because this is a, subs a web calendar I've subscribed to. I could click individually on these and say copy to my calendar, but there is no way I want to do that because I've got like a minimum of five events per day for the entire school year. I don't want to do that. So here's the technique that I found worked. I'm going to go ahead and open up the Apple Calendar application. And then in Apple Calendar, I'm going to subscribe to this same calendar. So I, remember, copied the WebCal URL. Now my computer's going to spin a little bit here. So over here in my calendar, I, I clicked here in the corner, and I'm doing, there's a feed URL and a WebCal URL. And WebCal is the one that I found uh, works for this. So now it looks like my calendar is locked up, so let me force quit it. And let me reopen my calendar, and hopefully it's not going to do that again. Okay, so now I can go up to File, and I'm going to say a new calendar subscription. Again, I'm on a Mac, uh, and so it has the address to put it in. So I'm going to paste in that address and choose Subscribe. And now I'll say uh, Wes's My Cassidy um, Classes. And I'm actually not really going to use this. I don't use Apple's Calendar app. I use Google Calendar. Um, so I'm, I don't want this to be in the cloud. I'm just giving it a name. Um, and I am leaving everything here. Um, I'm just going to click OK. And it's going to put all of those events here on my Apple Calendar. Now, what I can do, let me see if this is I'm going to select all those events. So I can select one, two, you know, an individual event. I could hold down Shift, but I'm going to press Command A, and that is going to select all of those events, and I'm just going to keep on scrolling 
because I think I'm going to do, actually, I don't want to get, I'm going to turn off U.S. holidays. Okay, so let me, let me start over. Let me go back to today. Okay, Command A, I click on one, press Command A. That is selecting everything that's visible. I just continue to press Command A, huh, and that's interesting. Okay, well, that must be the end of our trimester. So this is, these, this is just taking me, which is fine, through October 12th, which is the end of our first trimester. And interesting. I wonder why I can't see all those at once. Huh, that's weird. It's only doing the ones that are on the screen. Edit, select all. Okay. Man, that's bizarre. I really don't want to do this in two parts. Maybe I'll have to. I don't think I... Anyway, I didn't document this well last year when I did this, so that's why I thought I'd make a video today. All right, so I'm, I guess I can just select the things that are visible on the screen. Can I zoom out? Ugh. No, I can't. Um, okay, so we're just going to select those. I'm going to go to File and choose Export. And when I choose Export, it's going to allow me... Is this what I don't remember? See if the calendar archive is what I need to do. I don't remember which one it was. Um, I'm just going to try this as a as a, a calendar archive. So I'm going to I'm going to say export calendar archive, and I'll put this on my desktop, and I'm going to call this Cal One. Okay. Now I think I'm going to have to do this again for the remainder here. So I'm just going to end up with two files. So export. Cal 2. Okay, I don't know if that's right or not. I'll, I'll try it both ways. Here, that was just calendar export. Let's try calendar archive. We'll see what the, this is Cal 2. Okay, and then I'm going to do selection, export calendar archive. Good news is this works. Oh, I think this is the one. Yeah, because this is a an ICS file. So I'm going to say export a calendar archive. So that's what I think I want. No. Okay. I think the one I want to keep is just under export. All right. So what I have now here on my desktop is I have these four exported calendar files. And I think the ones that I can import into Google are .ics files. All right, let's give this a try. So now I'm gonna go over here to my Google Calendar and I'm going to import, uh, I'm gonna actually turn this off. So I don't wanna, I can, I can show that whenever I want, but remember I'm gonna try to import this into my calendar. And so, I have to move my face here a little bit. Okay, other calendars. I'm going to choose import. Select from the computer. Now, I'm also going to be choosing what calendar to bring this in to. And so I'm going to just have my default calendar selected here. And so on my desktop, I choose which one I want. I'm going to go ahead and choose the ICS file. I'm going to say open. And then when I click import, it should bring all of those calendar events right into my calendar. Okay, look at that. There were 216 events. Now, before we do the second one, let's check it and make sure that looks right. Yay, look at this. So now, starting next week on Wednesday, on my personal calendar, which didn't have any of this on there before, I'm now uh, getting all of my my Cassidy calendars. I could duplicate it and show that. But that is fantastic. That is exactly what I wanted to do. Let me do it one more time for my second calendar import. So again, under other calendars, import, and then I'm gonna select the file. I'm getting the second ICS file that was just under um, iCal. It was just after I selected them. So select the calendars you want. I just went to file, export, export. I didn't choose calendar archive. So now the second one's gonna come in. We'll click import. That first one had 216 events. Okay, that one says it has 216 events too. Hmm, that's kind of weird. 
And I thought it would have been perfectly. So let's go in now and look at the month and take a look. And yes, we've got got that through the 12th. Maybe both, maybe it had all of them. I think that's okay. I don't think I, maybe I had to select them. I think it, it automatically put, that's why it, those were the same both times, uh, 216 different events. That was, that's my first trimester of classes. Okay. So I'm not going to re-record this. Uh, you don't have to do that select all. It's exporting irrespective of what you have selected. So just file, export, export, and then that ICS file is what you need. Okay. I hope that's helpful to you. I'm really not going to be going back to this Apple Calendar at all. I don't use it at all. But now I have all my events in there. And for Calendly, which I use, uh, Calendly, um, people can schedule with me uh, with this link. And so if somebody wants to schedule a 30-minute meeting with me, uh, they can select the date. So um, hmm, it's interesting that it's not saying that I have available times. I wonder if it's if that's not updated. Wow. All right, I'm going to have to check that and see my settings because we should be... <laughs> that's Labor Day. All right, I'm going to have to go in there and tweak my settings. I think I need to do something about how much buffer time I have or something like that. Let's see about 15-minute meetings. All right, when can we do a 15-minute meeting with OS? Interesting. All right, I'm going to have to go in here and, and check those settings. But I think the calendar part of that is done. I hope that's helpful to you. Take care.